two minutes to. This one says it's nine o'clock. And my computer says it's nine o'clock. So I would like to welcome you all uh, to the special council meeting uh, where we're going to deal with two items. First of all, uh, I would like to just apologize for me wearing shorts. Uh, it's not allowed at the council meeting, but uh, no pants wants to go over my thing on my leg. <laughs> so I'll try to stand up for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hopefully it's the last one that I'm wearing shorts at, yeah. Uh, then that out of the way, I uh, can I then go to the agenda of the meeting. The notice everybody received. Uh, it's today the 16th and I've done the part of the welcoming uh, of all councillors uh, and senior managers uh, at, at this council meeting. The order of business is as follows. Uh, opening is done, attendance register is circling. Uh, if everybody has signed it, after is circulating, uh, it can come to my desk. I received yesterday afternoon, uh, around about half past four, uh, application for leave of absence from the executive mayor. It reads, uh, dear speaker, I hereby apply for leave of absence as I will not be able to attend the council meeting dated 16th of uh, April 2021 due to family responsibility I have to attend to. Yours in governance. Uh, I did not have an opportunity to communicate with the mayor yet, but uh, I'm bringing it here and I think it would be uh, prudent for council to accept that apology. There's not much we can do about it. <coughs> That's the only apology or leave of absence I received. Uh, item number three on our agenda is the declaration of uh, interest. Uh, can I call or ask councillors if there's anything that they would like to declare uh, their interest on? That's on the agenda of this council meeting. If there's none, the record will reflect as such. Item number five on our agenda is the confirmation of minutes, the last uh, open council meeting. The minutes of the council meeting will be circulated and approved at the next council meeting, which will be the 29th of uh, April, uh, not the 30th, because on the 30th we have uh, visit by the deputy president to ward one kovi to do with to deal with land issues so i just want councillors to take note of that uh, there will be no presentations made because i did not re get any requests for presentations at this stage can i just ask that we no, 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 not yet, not yet. Uh, number seven is the items for information dealt with by the executive mayor. There is no items for information dealt with by the executive mayor for this meeting. Number eight, feedback on uh, resolutions of council. Can I ask that this one stand over to the ordinary meeting of council as well for the 29th? Uh, Number nine, I would like to your indulgence to just make a change in the order of, of business. If we can uh, move number nine down as number 10, 
And then we can move number 10. Up on the agenda as number nine or, or uh, number 11. Number nine uh, becomes number 10. Number 11 becomes number nine. And number 10 becomes number 11. Is that clear, councillors? All happy with that? Thank you very much. Uh, we can then deal with uh, now the new number nine. I will read it out. Uh, the new number nine is the consideration of reports, non-delegated matters. And we have one item for consideration. Uh, and if we can go down on the agenda to the portfolio of index, we will find the item numbered as follows. Uh, it's in section one, Office of the Municipal Manager, and it's item C stroke one stroke two double one, stroke zero four, stroke two one. And it deals with Earth 156. Uh, and that is in respect of an appeal uh, received uh, by the office of the speaker uh, for the proposed rezoning and related matters of Earth uh, 156. Uh, 156, uh, is, as most of us know, we all know, is the earth just down below Signal Hill, the very last one. And, and that's the building that's been standing half built for many years. Uh, the reason for this item being on the agenda is that I received a letter And if I can ask the municipal manager just to uh, go through that letter for us, uh, read it out. From the lawyers of the applicant. And the applicant is uh, Cycle Sales, PTY Limited. Amen. So, the speaker, do you want me to summarize or read line by line? Uh, you can you can summarize it. Uh, it's, <coughs> only, it's on the screen in any case. I need <coughs> Thanks, speaker. This letter is received from Alan Mogolis Atenis, representing the applicant being a, a psycho sales. It's in relation with the decision that has to be taken by the executive mayor as an appeal authority in terms of Spluma. This uh, application comes a long way since I've started here. Uh, there were many reports that were required that relates to the structural report, that relates to the zoning scheme, that also relates to the advice that was obtained by the executive mayor. Unfortunately, it was not yet been considered up until to date. And then in terms of Section 62 of the Structures Act, they decided to appeal uh, to council. That is the reason why it's here in front of you. And then immediately, when I consulted with your office, we obtained a legal opinion and respect of the matter. And then to determine two things, whether one, is it valid for council to consider this uh, against Pluma because Pluma has given the powers to the executive mayor to dispose of any appeal. Two, whether to, to consider if council is a valid authority to consider the appeal and how must council dispose it of. So in a nutshell, that is the reason why this appeal is in front of, 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 of council. We, we obtained the opinion uh, which is also there on page 8 until page uh, 10, 10, which 
categorically states that, which is Annex B of the report, that council can consider the report. And council must hear the other side of the story from the applicants and familiarize itself with all necessary documentation which relates to this appeal before it can be disposed of. That is the purpose of why the report is in front of you. Okay. Uh, let me just... You dealt with the uh, opinion from Swart as well. Yes, we did. Mm. Let me not just there. Yes. For his reference, I was just summarizing it. Uh, the report from <coughs> the senior council. Good. Now, uh, councillors, after receiving uh, uh, a legal opinion on the questions asked uh, by the attorney of the applicant, uh, as the MF indicated, we wanted to get clarity if it is indeed so that the office of the executive mayor is not should not be involved anymore in the uh, dealing of this item and if the appeal is indeed valid uh, our legal opinion that we received as mm uh, summarized uh, indicate uh, exactly that the executive office of executive mayor is no more can no more be involved uh, it means that council have to deal with the appeal now, there's a few recommendations, and I'm going to ask the MM just to read out those recommendations for us as well, uh, the amended recommendations, and then the Council can take a decision on, on the way forward. Thanks, Speaker. Recommendation number one, that Council take note of the Speaker has received a formal appeal in respect of the proposed rezoning and related matters regarding F156. That council take note of the legal advice that has been sought by the speaker and that the advice has been received, which is attached as an extra B. That council acknowledge the receipt of the appeal. That council take note of the appeal is valid so that it can be able to dispose it of. That the appellant be advised that council would proceed to consider the appeal once updated relevant reports have been received, which is the one that I've cited, which deals with the structure of the, of the building and other related reports that uh, are part of this uh, appeal, that all recent reports in, res in respect of F156 received and or obtained by the municipality be submitted to the office of the speaker within five working days, which are available in the administration, that it be noted that the executive may, may not participate in any proceedings related to this matter due to the, his decision forming the subject matter of the appeal. Uh, Council, uh... Oh, councillors, the item is serving. Councillor Nell. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, um, we have taken note of the legal advice received, which I think is very important. Um, the fact is that this is a council decision now. There is no need to waste time. I think council should take this decision. We've had 20 years worth of public feedback. We have had recent feedback. I don't think there is a need to delay any further. I, I suggest that we vote immediately to uh, reject this appeal. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Councillor Nell. Councillor Swart. Thank you, Speaker. We all know that this property has been controversial for a long time. But what, what's concerning to me is that we're even in this position at the moment because there's a demolition order on this property. That was, served, that, that was given in, on the 25th of November 2016. And the first paragraph of that demolition order says, the erection of the building on Earth 156 Plettenberg is contrary to and does not comply with the national building regulations. And yet still nothing's happened, so I don't even know how we could have entertained a rezoning application without the demolition order having taken place. And whenever you try and find out from the administration what's happening, it gets fobbed off. And, and this apparently has happened with councillors before my time in Wuhan as well. So um, somehow this demolition order needs to be brought into this appeal. I don't know if it can, because I know the appeal's on a different matter, but it still relates to the same property. Can I just, uh, uh, maybe because I can see we are going into uh, wanting to discuss in the appeal. Uh, up to today, I have not seen the application. 
uh, I have asked uh, the administration to forward uh, my office all relevant information regarding the application uh, and uh, whatever appeals that is uh, around this, this, this earth. Un unless I have that, I cannot take any decision on it. Uh, can I give the undertaking to councillors uh, uh, after this decision, MM, can we get that information? And then, uh, I don't know how many times left, uh, we have six weeks to dispose of this. Uh, we received the uh, appeal on the 1st of April, and I think by, we should, by the next council meeting, which is the 29th, uh, because I want all councillors to have all the relevant information for you to make an informed decision on it, uh, that we have this item on the agenda for the 29th, uh, meeting of the 29th, and then we can uh, take a decision, a final decision on it, on it there. I would really ask councils in Dalio to that, just so that you have all the information, because you have nothing now. Certainly, I don't have anything, apart from this, this, this two legal opinions on, on the item. Yes, Councillor Mali. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, I, I take note of the, the background uh, which re indicate that the executive mayor in his capacity as the appellant authority um, was allowed uh, to deal with the matter in 60 days and that the executive mayor failed to decide on the appeal and that the executive mayor also um, uh, having received a formal demand which was given on the 24th of March to finalize the matter um, on the 26th also failed to do that. And now that on its own um, borders on the promotion of the Administrative Justice Act. And seated here, and I want to concur with the councillors that we shouldn't waste time on this issue. Um, and we all know or head of the history of the building. I don't know the merits of this appeal. Mm. I have not received or read any documents related to it. And one reads the item and notes that has been a lot of communication back and forth and a failure to deal with the actual issue. So. And I hope those 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 councillors who who knows more can really also take us into confidence to see what are the issues really uh, that 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 uh, we need to deal with and we should be concerned about as councillors before we can really say yes or no. Um, and and I know of the history of a legal battle and the court outcome. Uh, which it was supposed to be demolished, as uh, Councillor Swart is saying. I have never read that uh, legal or the, the, the court case. So I will sit it here now. I will, I will really know what has happened. But what I would wanted us to do, perhaps, is to note the legal opinion which you sought and received, and that on the, 20, on the 29th of uh, uh, April, April the next council meeting, we finalize this matter. Now, it will give us now a time to read all the documentation that we must receive or we must get. And then by the time we get on the 29th, we, we know if, as Councillor uh, Bill is saying, we reject the appeal, we will reject it knowing what are the details. So I will not want us to deal with it in a fashion that um, we have conceived ideas about whether we want to accept it or not accept it. But I wonder to just to appraise, all of us appraise about the details. That's, that's what I will say. Thanks, Speaker. Happy with that, Councillor Dell? We're happy with that, thank you. Speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, then, uh, MM, uh, soonest uh, we can get the information and uh, get it to councillors because I understand it's, it's quite a bit of information uh, that councillors can go through it, even if it's before the agenda is out. A great speaker. <clears throat> and I, I would then really call on councillors that uh, this is an, uh, 
I wouldn't say it's a confidential matter, but it's a serious matter uh, that we, when we sit around the table and, and discuss it, uh, hopefully we did not speak to anybody else outside uh, mm -hmm. uh, that gathering. I think we, uh, I, if when I see the information, we can make an, an assessment if everything is there, but I don't think we should open it up again uh, for for comments from any objector or uh, we are now at the appeal stage and we should deal with the appeal uh, as it's standing in front of us, yeah. Thank you very much. So with that then, uh, the resolutions is carried and uh, we came to an end of this item. Happy MM? Didn't get a proposal in a second. Okay, MM wants a proposal in a second. I thought it was unanimous, uh, but uh, can I get a proposal in a second now? Yes, Councilor Nell? Councilor Bali, you yes. propose? <coughs> Councilor Bali proposed, seconded by uh, uh, Councilor Nell. Second. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilors. Uh, if we can then go back to the agenda. Order of business again. <coughs> We are going to item 10, and item 10 is now, the new item 10 is now consideration of notices of motions, and item 10.1 it would be uh, that notice of a motion dated the 7th of April was received from Councillor Machila, uh, and the title of the uh, notice is notice of motion to remove the executive mayor and the uh, notice or the motion is uh, circulated it's on the agenda uh, and according to the rules of order i'm going to ask uh, councillor machila to present his motion here thank you councillor machila thank you speaker uh, speaker i'm not going to read everything that is been written on the letter but I will just go straight to the point. I kindly, <clears throat> kindly take notice that I, Councillor Kalama Jela, hereby give a notice of my intention to remove, to move a motion to remove the Executive Mayor, Peter Simboti Luisi, as Executive Mayor from the Peter Municipality Office. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, uh, Councillor Machila. I see on the uh, notice of the motion that the motion has been duly seconded uh, by Councillor uh, Van Reina. Uh, Councillor Van Reina, anything you'd like to add? Speaker, um, I just second the motion. Uh, thank you, Councillor Van Reina. We, uh, Council, we received a motion, notice of a motion, uh, uh, duly proposed according to the rules, duly seconded according to the rules. Uh, is there a proposer, uh, an opposer to the motion? Any councillor opposing the motion? If there is no opposer to the motion, uh, MM, it means that the motion is carried. Uh, the executive uh, Mayor is then removed, Councillor Lobesi is then removed from office. Uh, according to Section 56, 6 of the Structures Act, uh, it reads as follows. Uh, it says the Deputy Executive Mayor of a municipality exercises the powers and performs the duties of the executive mayor, if the executive mayor is absent or not available, or if the executive mayor mayor's uh, office is vacant. In this case, the office of the executive mayor is vacant, uh, and it means then that uh, the deputy executive mayor, Councillor Kabai, uh, will be acting uh, as executive mayor uh, as of today. Uh, yeah, that concludes.
Is there any councillor that wants to say anything or make input before I go move on to the next point on the agenda? I if propose we move on. Uh, okay, if we can move on then uh, to the next point on the agenda. Uh, next point being point 12. No, no, no. Uh, point 12, yes, uh, because we've done, oh, so point 11. I might just get my bearings correct. It's point 11, yes. A statement of communications by the executive mayor. In this case, it will be the acting executive mayor. Uh, Executive Mayor? <laughs> new role? <laughs> new responsibilities? Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, good morning, Councillors. Uh, again, thank you, Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, greetings to the officials that are here today. And I, I understand that also the public has joined us virtually. Uh, as an active uh, <clears throat> acting executive mayor speaker, I hold all the authority of the mayoral seat and I'm committed to continue serving the people of Pito with uninterrupted services. Having served as the executive deputy mayor speaker, and having been a councillor for the past 10 years, I have vast experience in local government. My knowledge of the area and the needs of the people will come in handy in my quest to lead this collective of committed councillors. We will work together to provide uninterrupted service delivery to our communities. With approximately four months speaker to the next local government elections that are coming, ours also will be to also streamline the mayoral office in an attempt to cut costs and contribute in increased service delivery. We'll also prepare and present a budget which will be sent to the provincial treasurer and the national treasurer. We'll have a funded budget, Speaker, that will cater for the needs of all our communities. The budget will go for an extensive public participation so that it speaks to the needs of our people. In the coming days, Speaker, I will be appointing an interim a mayoral committee that will serve until a council elects a new executive mayor, which will play a key oversight role over administration work. In the meantime, Speaker, we assure our residents that the administration is secure there will be no political interference. We remain committed to the work we do, and our aim is to deliver services to all our residents. We shall not be derailed, Speaker, and nothing will stop us from reaching our goals as this Council. With those uh, words, Speaker, I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Acting Executive Mayor. Uh, under item 10.2 from my side, I would like to wish you all the best. Uh, and I know that you will be a uniting force uh, across all three uh, political formations that we have uh, in this council. Uh, and I also know that your heart is with our communities uh, and that uh, I can only wish you uh, all the best 
and that there will be a, a very close relationship between uh, your office and, and the rest of, of council. Uh, so with that few words, uh, congratulations and yeah, uh, good luck with, with the task ahead. You've got uh, certainly my support and I'm sure you've got the support of all, every single councillor uh, in this chambers, seeing that uh, your appointment uh, or election was unanimous. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Kabai. Uh, if we can move to our next point on the agenda then, uh, councillors, uh, it's item 12, urgent matter submitted by the municipal manager, uh, none received. Uh, item 13, uh, consideration of uh, notices of question, uh, none received. Uh, item 14, uh, consideration of motions of exigency, none received. Uh, we have no in committee items. Uh, and if I can then record the uh, councillors present uh, at this meeting, uh, I would like to start off with the acting executive mayor, Councillor Kabai. Uh, the uh, Chief Whip of the ANC, Councillor Bali. Uh, we have Councillor Machila. We have Councillor Van Reiner. We have Councillor Swart. We have Councillor Seisi. We have Councillor Ulefir. We have Councillor Nell. Councillor Van Vogel. Uh, Councillor Ndai. And Councillor Kamkam. They are still present. Uh, the application of leave of absence from Councillor Lobesi is still on the record. Uh, with that few uh, words, uh, Councillors, I would like to close this meeting uh, of today. Thank you very much for your attendance and thank you for your participation.